the Kickoff Breakfast Show. Welcome back to the Kickoff Sports Breakfast Show on Beach FM 106.3. And it is a, been a great honour of mine during this time with no sports to celebrate our beloved Hurricanes and what would have been the 25th season of the Hurricanes. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking to some pretty amazing people that have worn the jersey. We started with the props, hookers, locks, and now we are talking to the Lucys. And it is a great honour of mine to welcome in a former captain from 2001 to 2011. He wore the K's jersey for 101 times. He is Hurricanes number 86. He is Rodney Suyalo. Good day, brothers. Hey guys, uh, good morning. Uh, how are you doing, mate? I know you're in Sri Lanka now, um, far away from home. How, how are you holding up? It, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, obviously, with this COVID-19 um, stuff going on, it's been two and a half months of um, complete lockdown over here, so you're actually stuck inside your house and, and you can't leave. So uh, they've, they've actually got um, yeah, the military and stuff um, on the roads patrolling that. So um, it's been difficult in that in that regards, but um, the experience here yeah, is pretty awesome. Yeah, we well, are in Sri Lanka now. So is there is there any heads up of when you're going to be out, back out there coaching again? Well, I'm trying to find a way to get back home um, at the moment. Um, oh, nice. So all the flights and that are booked. So I want to come home for a bit and then and then head back when the season um, kicks off again. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure sure get some help in because we're not far away from it. Hey, let's uh, let's go back to the, those days. 2001, you made your debut for the Hurricanes. Uh, not bad for for a minor boy coming out. Did you look up to the the franchise those early years? Yeah, I mean, I, I've just started watching rugby at that time because um, I started my tri- uh, my rugby at, at the age of 14 because I I played soccer, so. Um, um, yeah, so I only really started watching towards the end of it and um, really admired uh, Jonah coming through. But obviously, because that's when I started playing and, and I saw him play at Wesley, uh, Wesley College. So um, to see him progress to that level so quick, um, you had to admire. And then one of the players was uh, was Cully as well. So up, up your way. So yeah. um, he, he was definitely someone that I admired. Excellent. So, so you you looked up to Jonah. It must have been a, a bit of a, a bit of a um, I don't know reality reality hit when you when you go into camp and he's now your teammate. Yeah, um, he, he gets you know he's he's a starstruck when you when you do meet him. Um, oh, I first met Jonah at um, New Zealand Sounds actually. So we're in the late nineties where. I actually had to um, trial against him in the opposing team, so um, yeah, that wasn't an easy, easy task. Yeah, um, tell tell us about um, those early days in in the Canes jersey being from um, from Mana. What was one of those uh, biggest things that you adapted to becoming a professional rugby player? Um, well, I think the biggest challenges were because um, I was still quite young. Um, and it's still quite uh, relatively quite new to the game, so it's just being able to make adjustments um, where you're you, you're on that professional um, era, and that's um, and that's something totally different because I, I played rugby because I, I loved the game. You know, I train pretty hard. I wake up at uh, four thirty in the morning every day anyway, so um, so that wasn't a change. But it was the fact that the professional, you know, you're in front of the light, like that's the stuff that you have to adjust to. Yeah. Those early days of the Hurricanes were pretty special, mate. You, there's a, a crop of players that came through. Um, tell us what it was um, being around uh, some of the, like, the, the Cullies, the Tanas, the Jerrys, um, and, and buzzing off them and, and keeping, you know, I'm sure you guys would have motivated each other heaps. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally different, you know. I like to... Um... You, you respect uh, the people that you play with, but um, you know I never lost the person that I was or that I am, and that's um, you know I think that's one thing that uh, is, a, is a real strength of mine is, is being able to be grounded and 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 to know who you are. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a father of four and and a grandfather of one, so 
um, you know, I, I've been brought up in a, in a really awesome family and, um, and, 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 a, and a big family, especially our Samoan family. So we had a lot of kids and a lot of relatives around. So yeah. you're able to, um, you know, stay true to yourself. Awesome. Those uh, those principles would have helped big time when you did become um, one of the leaders in the team and, and and eventually the captain. How did you find that transition as a cap uh, as a as a as a player and, and going into those leadership roles as such a quiet, humble person? Yeah, that's something that um, that's you know totally different as well. Um, well. Obviously, there are different types of leaders and. And my, my style of uh, leadership is, is a little bit different to a, a lot of uh, people, but um, um, I believe that that was one of my strengths, and that and that has been able to identify your weaknesses and your strengths, and, and then being able to incorporate um, or, or bring together um, people, a bunch of people that can um, that can look after certain areas of your of your team. Yeah. Hey. Um... <clears throat> What did it mean to put the jersey on for you personally um, to put to be a hurricane? N- not even just play a hundred and one caps, just just one cap. What did it mean to you? Uh, for me, it's um, it, it, it's quite emotional because it's uh, it, it's something that um, that you not only play for yourself, but you play for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and you represent your family most and foremost. Um, but you also represent people that love to, um, that kind of passionate supporters. So for me, it's uh, it's a real honour and a real privilege. Awesome. Hey, I do want to I do want to um, talk about that that black jersey, mate. I mean, for a guy that played football uh, and probably didn't even think he'd, he'd get to those levels to go to the highest level of them all, what did it mean as a proud uh, Samoan boy, um, born boy, um, to eventually ri- rise to the heights of, of the All Blacks? Uh, it meant a lot, to be honest. You know, especially um, from. Uh, from the, uh, the humble beginnings that we were brought up in, um, born in Samoa, you know, left to, uh, well, came over to, you know, to New Zealand for um, uh, to, to better your know, opportunities, and that's what my parents did. Um, so we so we really took that with two hands and and, and ran all that. Um, the fact that I started really late um, with rugby. Um, it was actually quite enjoyable, you know. Yeah. So I actually started off with rugby league, to be honest, because um, rugby league I enjoyed the state of origin. Yeah. And then um, I, I was a little bit more physical, and um, you know, in, in the game of soccer, so it was like, well, why don't you change over? Because you know, so my two older bro- uh, two older brothers were playing rugby, and so yeah. made the transition uh, over to rugby. So. Um, yeah, it actually meant a lot, you know, especially, and then the other area is Potty Door. Yeah. So we sort of made that North. myself, Jerry, and my brother, um, who, who plays for Star Moore, um, now coaches as well, you know, we sort of had to, um, back then, we sort of had to um, be, be the leaders and say, well, actually, we, we can, we can do this, you know, we can get out of here. Yeah. And then... Man, and what led from that was the Tom T. Allisons, or the Allison brothers, um, TJ Perinara is the uh, latest one there, Johnny Schwager, yeah. um, or even Cully, but just up the hill. So yeah. um, you know, there, was a, there was a few of us that, that took those opportunities. You do mention getting out of Porirua, but you did almost, uh, part, of the, part of that group, start the boy's been proud of it again, and TJ. I mean, he won't sing sing more proud about Porirua and Norths. Um, how how what pride do you take in, in the work that you did community, in, um, not just as a rugby player, but actually for communities during that time? And still, yeah, I take big pride. Uh, I'm very proud of where where we're from. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll sort of reiterate the fact that I'm getting out. It's not getting out of yeah, Porirua. Yeah, yeah. It's actually. Um, you know, uh, like um, bigger things. It's really standing up and saying, "Well, there, there, there are, you know, yeah. there is more to uh, to life than 
then following um, following the trend, and that was to drink a lot and you know just party. Yeah, yeah. So you know, for us, it was like, well, no, we actually need to get out of this. You know, yeah. there's, there's better opportunities, and um, we can actually show, as, as, especially as a um, as an islander. Oh, well, you know, so you, your islanders and your Maoris, and yeah. so let's not go the stereotypical way, and we can actually do this and start running, which is um, which is something that um, a lot of people go in that island just can't run. Yeah. So that was that was uh, what started that for me. It was the fact that. Um, you know, I, I sort of, um, I sort of backed my tank and 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 ran down a lot of people because I was I was wanting to go a little bit further than a lot of a lot of people. So um, I ran really early, and that was my four thirty five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and that was from the age of fourteen. So um, I wanted to change that mindset of of being able to um, run. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you you've um, played with some of the the greats of the game, but was there any other sporting people that you looked up to? I mean, I asked. I mean, we've just had the last dance on Netflix, but you know, was there anyone outside of of rugby that you looked up to as as a bit of a role model? Oh, I looked up to a lot of people. You know, I really love my sport. Yeah. So, um, you know, I look up to Ian Smith. You know, watch a lot of um, MMA, which um, which uh, really helped me. And I especially as a, as a smaller number eight, um, so um, you really competing against other number eights that are, you know, six, six, six at times, and yeah. probably hundred and uh, I think a hundred and sixteen was the lightest, in, <laughs> and I was at, and I started at um, under hundred, so um, the heaviest I got was one hundred and twelve kilos, wow. and that um, that took a lot of work to to get to that weight. Yeah. So I, I really got into the jiu-jitsu stuff and that to be able to um, to be able to compete um, in their contact area. And that and that that would have definitely helped with uh, the levels that you were playing rugby with, with centering and, and calming yourself, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. The, I mean, the, um, it sort of frustrated the trainers a bit uh, because you're constantly losing weight when he's trying to when he's trying to keep weight. So he didn't understand because he's keeping a diary of, of your um, of your trainings and your and your nutrition. So he's like, I don't understand this because you're still losing two or three kilos every week. So we're gaining four and we're losing two or three. So he doesn't understand it. So um, it wasn't until he he started to um, put a dialogue of what what I was actually doing and <laughs> I'm sort of running those early hours or and then. And then doing a bit of jujitsu at the end of the at the end of my sessions, but um, I enjoyed it. You know, I think it's definitely helped. Um, definitely helped me um, get get through those big games. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Hey, mate, what what do you what do you take uh, what do you take away the most from your playing days? You know, and there was so so many highlights um, and such a great career for a guy that played football. Still blows my mind. Um, but you know, what 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 do you most let, take away from your playing days? I think it's the friendships that you that you form. Yeah. And then and then one thing um, that I um, that I actually give credit to. Uh, to our all black coaches, I met. Um, I went into the presentation a couple of years ago, and um, and that was one of the questions that was asked of me and uh, from one of the players. And I, and I actually said it was um, it was bringing me out of um, out of my comfort zone because I was I was naturally a shy kid anyway. I never spoke um, growing up until the age of like. 10 or whatever because I had so I had my mum um, answer for me so when people would uh, ask questions I would look at my mum to answer so um, I never I never really spoke growing up and um, especially if I, if I didn't know you I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't speak at all um, I'd speak in front of the family and obviously friends but uh, that, that, that's something for me that I really took out of um, especially the all black environment you know, just to be, uh, um, just to feel comfortable being uncomfortable. So, yeah. Um, so it's definitely something that I really, really started growing um, in there and taking into my coaching career. 
Yeah, well, the, uh, all the way through that, I was just thinking your coaching career, how, how do you go from um, that to that? I mean, how, did you think you'd be a coach? Did you think you'd take that development, uh, that, that step towards uh, staying in the game at that level? Yeah, I um, uh, towards the latter end of my career, probably three years before I actually retired, I was um, I, I really loved the, the coaching side. I'd been able to um, how, how do you you know how, how do you do something without um, or how do you manipulate certain areas of the game? I really loved that because that's the way that I played the game anyway. Been that. Um, I'm sort of just under six three, and in, at the time I was at a hundred and hundred and five was the average weight for me. So it's smaller. So how do we how do we beat um, people and or how do we beat teams? So that's something that I really took from um, Wayne Smith, and I thought, no, I really love this um, this coaching stuff. What kind of coach are you, mate? Are you, uh, are you a, a players uh, players coach, a coach coach, or what, what, what kind of what kind of category do you put yourself in? Um, well, well, I think I'm more of an empathetic sort of guy, sort of um, a lot of empathy for people. So being able to get the best out of people, I I, I believe I'm I'm that type of coach where you don't have to be the best player. Yeah, like if you. I mean, if you have a five-star attitude and a two-star rating, uh, <laughs> no, I definitely can bring the best out of you. Yeah. Um, so I'm sort of, um, yeah, I believe I'm one of those coaches. Awesome, awesome. And um, what, what, were, what are the, you're in Sri Lanka now, but where would you like to take your coaching? Would you like to come back here and, and be at the national level or is there other things that you want to achieve over there before you come back for good? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely a massive goal of mine is to coach as high as I can. The uh, reason why I actually came over here was to challenge myself as a head coach. So um, I'm uh, doing a director's role over here, coaching the whole system, um, and be, being able to implement a lot of stuff is, is what, um, you know, obviously that, that our professional era of, of coaching there is. 20% of coaching is, is on field and then 80% of it's all organisational and, and making sure that, uh, that your plans are, are right and, and you've got the right people in place. Yep. I got to ask, and because a, a good friend of mine, uh, Scotty Waldron, went into coaching, and um, luckily he was bald already. Um, what kind? Of, how, how are you watching the game when you can't go on there and do it yourself? Have you have you become better and better as your coaching career has gone on? That you know, if they don't do the move that they practice a hundred times that week, kind of thing. Yeah, I've actually been a, a lot better than a lot of players like Peter and <laughs> um, and and Thomas. You know, they, they still played after their career. I, I, I never put my boots back on um, right. once I retired. Yeah. So, um, but you still you still get tempted, um, especially around that physical, um, that physicality side of it, where um, we don't realise it until later. But the players are actually baiting you into, um, <laughs> into sh- demonstrating. Yeah. So it's, it's happened a couple of times during training, and the boys have had a good laugh of it, but. Um, you realise that that the mentality is still there, and um, and obviously I, I actually feel better now than I did when I finished um, playing rugby. So the I, body I managed with body. So the body's good. Yeah. No lasting lasting niggles or anything like that. Or no, uh, I actually feel a lot better now than I did towards the end of it. So um, uh, it's because I'm, I'm you know obviously manage my body, and um, you're not getting that hit. You're not yeah. in the constant hitting, so yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, I haven't been tempted to um, put the the boots on like <laughs> some of our my fellow teammates. Awesome. Hey, I won't keep you too much longer, mate. You've been you've been awesome, but there there are a couple of guys that I need to talk about and 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 ask. Um, of course, two guys that aren't with us anymore: uh, Jerry Jerry Collins and, and John Loma. You played you played a lot of ball with them. Uh, what were they like as teammates? What, you know, what, what were they like um, to be to be, be around? Yeah, they're fantastic. I mean, obviously, both good, really good friends of mine, and um, I think that totally different personalities as well, yeah. which, is, which is what rugby and sport is about, you know. 
you have people with different personalities and and uh, those two are totally different. So uh, we got Jerry who loves to clown around and, um, you know, he doesn't take things too seriously. And, you know, uh, probably the only thing he does take seriously is rugby. So, yeah. um, and then you've got Jonah who um, is an absolute beast, but he's, he's actually quite a quite humble person as well. So, um, but... Um, two two fantastic um, players and indi- individuals as well. So. Awesome. Well, mate, um, thank you so much for your time t- uh, today. It- it's been uh, I've wanted to I've wanted to talk to you for a very long time. So thank you so much. Um, go well. Look after yourself, and please come home soon. Thanks, David. God bless, man.